Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at generating self-signed certificates to be used on Mac OS, and then we're going to use that self-signed certificate in Node.js. Um, now the first thing that might come to mind is, well, why are we using Node.js with our certificate directly and not using Apache or Nginx or similar? Uh, well, you could use anything that you want. Um, one example is I actually use, uh, for testing locally at least, I use the self-signed certificates with Node.js. Uh, when I'm working with my YubiKey hardware tokens uh, for two-factor authentication. Um, so this is just one example. You could do it any way you want when it comes to um, HTTPS. But uh, for this example, we're just going to be using Node.js and, and Mac OS with our self-signed certificate. Um, so I do have my terminal up. We will need to generate a certificate. Um, and then once we generate it, we can import it into our keychain. And then we can start using it in Node. Um, so the first step is, well, we, we need to generate it. So let's go ahead and type in open SSL. We're going to say we want to generate an RSA, uh, RSA uh, certificate, and we're going to specify the output path. I'm going to say the output path is going to be directly on my desktop. I'm going to call it localhost.key, and it's going to have uh, a length of 2048. With that generated, uh, now I need to request a certificate from it. Um, so I can say open SSL. I can say request uh, hyphen new. This is going to be an X509 um, certificate. I'm going to say key. Uh, so the key is what we just generated. So it's going to be localhost.key. Um, I'm going to specify the output path of this new certificate file. Um, and it's going to be uh, localhost.cert. So right on my desktop again. And it's going to expire after. 365 days, so it's going to be um, valid for one year. And you could you could always modify any of this uh, per your requirements, um, but for this example, it's fine. Um, so it's going to ask us a series of questions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill them in. So my country name is going to be U.S. Uh, my state name is going to be California. The city Tracy uh, organization. Let's call it the, the Polyglot Developer. Uh, unit, um, let's say, I don't know, development, uh, common name, um, so this would be the fully qualified host, and at which point, uh, let's just go ahead and use localhost and see how that goes. Uh, email address, I'm just going to say example at example.com, and it generated, um, and it will be on my desktop. Um, so the next step is, well, let's uh, let's worry about importing that information. Um, so first of all, I'm going to create a new new project directory on my on my desktop. I'm going to call it. Uh, I'm going to say make directory. Let's call it cert example. I'm going to move the local host certificate um, into uh, both of them. I'm going to move them into the cert example, and then I'm going to navigate into cert example. Um, so I can open it, and I can see what we have working for us. Um, now the next step is, well, we need to import it into our um, keychain uh, on Mac. So what we want to do is we have our, our um, keychain open. Um, what we want to do is we want to just drag over the localhost certificate file. We can drag it directly into the certificates category, um, the login section for the keychain. I'm going to drag it in. Uh, you can see that it did add to my list here. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to double click on it and see what's in it. Um, so for example, it has all of the information that I had just added. Um, so US, California, Tracy. Uh, what's again important here is the common name being localhost because that's how we plan to use the certificate. Um, and it's important from a sense that when we try to use this in, uh, from a web browser, um, it needs to recognize that, hey, we're, we're trying to do this from localhost. Um, because if we type in our actual domain name, um, it'll likely give us some problems. Um, so with that information out of the way, I can go back into my terminal here. Uh, let's go ahead. We're, we're still in our certs example directory. I'm going to initialize a new a Node.js project. Um, so what I can do is I can say npm init hyphen y. That'll create a new uh, package.json file for me. The next step is I need to install Express.js uh, because that's going to be the framework that we want to use. So I'm going to say npm install Express hyphen hyphen save and with that installed let's go ahead and create a file I'm going to call it app.js this is going to be where all of our application logic goes 
Um, so I'm going to open it now. I'm going to say open. Uh, oh, not open actually. Um, I, it was already open. I want to open it with my editor. So I'm going to say Adam. Um, you can use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever you want. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, but all of this uh, for this example should exist in the same directory, but definitely keep track of your key insert paths uh, because it will be important. Um, and in production, you probably don't want to store them in the same place. Um, maybe a, a path that's not accessible by uh, the general uh, user. Um, so what we want to do is we, we want to uh, import some of our dependencies now. And I'm going to zoom in here. Um, so we want to say constant. We want to say express equals require express. But we also want to add two more. Um, and this has to do with our actual certificates. Uh, so for one, because we want to use HTTPS, uh, we need to require it. And we don't need to download anything for it. It's, it's already going to be available for us. Uh, but we also want to include the file system. Uh, so we can call that uh, FS or file system, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this also is already readily available to us. And that's for actually loading the certificates from our file system. We can initialize Express Framework. Um, so I'll say express. Uh, we can actually um, create our, uh, actually start serving our server now. Um, and instead of typically what you would do is you'd say app.listen and you'd be good to go. Um, but we're actually going to do an extra step here. A and it's going gonna, it's gonna to change things because we are using HTTPS. Um, so I want to say HTTPS.create server. I want to provide some options, so some parameters here. Uh, one, I want to specify the key that we want to use, and that's going to be fs.readfilesync, so synchronous read. Um, and you can change this up to be better meet your needs, but a synchronous read is fine for us. Uh, we're going to say localhost.key, and then we want to say cert. It's going to be fs.readfilesync. That's going to be localhost.cert. And then that's all of our options that we want to add. Uh, we want to say comma app. Um, so this is all part of the create server, um, but we're specifying the app for Express Framework because that's what we're going to be using as our core mechanism. Um, and with that, we can actually say uh, dot listen. We want to listen on port 443 uh, because that's a typical um, HTTPS port. Um, and we want to specify what happens after we start serving. Um, so when, when we start serving, let's just simply say console.log. We're going to say listening at uh, 443. Um, so if we were to run this, it, it would technically run, but we don't, we don't have any endpoints to work with. And we could actually validate this now. But we can say, um, let's go and say node app.js. And it's listening. But like I said, we don't have any endpoints. Uh, if we were to navigate in our web browser, nothing would happen. So I'll stop this. Let's go ahead and add an endpoint. I'm going to say app.get. I'm going to provide the path. So in this case, let's just make it a root endpoint. We're going to say request response next. So typical stuff for Express Framework. Um, we're also going to say response.send. Uh, we'll just provide it a message here. So message hello world. Um, so just something simple. We're, when, we, when we navigate to this point, it's just going to say hello world, nothing more, but it's going to be an HTTPS site. Um, so if I run it again, I say node app.js, I go over to my web browser, and I type in uh, localhost. Actually, let's see what happens when we just go to localhost. Um, so page isn't working um, because we're, we're trying to go to the port, but we're not specifying uh, the protocol here. So we're just going to say HTTPS, localhost. I don't think you need to add the port, but let's try this. Um, so the connection is not private. So it's doing this because it, uh, Google Chrome is trying to validate the certificate authority. Um, our local host is not a certificate authority. It's not a recognized one like VeriSign and, and all that other good stuff, Komodo. Um, so it's going to throw this warning, which is fine. We made this site. We made this certificate. We know that even though it's not private, it's still safe. So we can click Advanced. I can say Proceed to Localhost Unsafe. Uh, and then in the end, it says, you know what? Hello world. So even though we're using HTTPS, it's not secure in the sense that uh, the certificate can't be validated. Um, but we're still using a self-signed 
uh, local certificate. Um, and this, again, I'm going to do a, a future tutorial, um, and this is going to be necessary for uh, playing around with our hardware tokens for two-factor authentication because hardware-based uh, two-factor authentication requires HTTPS. Um, and having this done uh, is plenty. It works for us. Um, so just to recap, I did generate the certificate. I copied it over to my keychain on Mac OS. Uh, the, the steps will be similar uh, for other, other operating systems. I don't know about Windows, but Linux, uh, the, the process for generating your certificates will be similar. Um, and then you just create this, this uh, Node.js code. Um, so we use HTTPS alongside Express, and it worked out fine.